Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and built out this screen here we see on the emulator. This is our daily quote uh, composable. So we have an API that we're going to connect up to. It's going to feed us the quote of the day. We're just going to display it, allow the user a little bit of favoriting interactivity, which we haven't done yet. Uh, but yeah, mainly just displaying it, built this out last episode. Let me know how you think it looks in the comments below. If you missed it, I suggest checking it out. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about Hilt. We're going to talk about Retrofit, some very popular, very common libraries. If you've been with the channel before, you know we've used it before. And if not, this will help you get started in your project. We see in our plugin level, we have a few plugins we need to add for uh, Hilt. Copy this straight out of the documentation. As we scroll down here in our dependencies section, we also have a couple additional uh, you know, dependencies to inject here for Hilt itself. And then also something for the annotation processor, correct error types. This is all very, very uh, you know, straightforward. Just fetched it straight from our dependency injection with Hilt Android Docs. I'll link this in the description if you're interested in reading through it. But you know, I'll walk you through the parts that you need. For Retrofit here, you can go ahead and you know also just Google around Android Retrofit. This is probably the greatest, most powerful, most popular networking library inside Android. Very easy to get to this page. You know, you could read through it if you want. I'll link it in the description. All the way at the bottom, we do have, uh, you know, the Gradle import that we're gonna need. We can, you know, look over at their uh, GitHub here. We see we're operating on 2.9.0, so we just kind of fill that in. And that's what we have here in our, uh, you know, dependencies block. And then also we've added in something called Moshi. Um, this is very similar to JSON. I also have this here. I'll link it in the description of the video. But this is basically how we're going to serialize the JSON here. So we have Hilt, which is our dependency injection library. We have Retrofit, which is our networking library. And we have Moshi, which is our JSON deserialization serialization library. So with the setup out of the way, don't forget to subscribe if you're brand new. Uh, like to help me out and let's just keep the ball rolling. So the first things we need to do here with the uh, Hilt implementation is we need to create an application class. So this is just any old class normally named application uh, at the end and normally also the title of your uh, app there. So it's pretty straightforward. You just need to extend the Android app application. That's really all we need at this, at this point because we do need to provide a couple annotations along the way. The uh, other annotation that we're gonna have to worry about here is at our main activity. If you're not doing Compose, this will also happen at the activity or fragment level, but because we have everything inside of Compose, we only have one entry point from like the Android system side of things. Uh, and that is our main activity. We're not dealing with fragments or anything along those lines. All of the screens here are straight composables and they all exist in the activity. So we'll simply annotate the activity or fragment if you need to as at Android entry point. And now that will allow you to uh, you know, utilize this library inside of uh, the activity, the entry point, whatever it is, a fragment, right? All that stuff. But that's about it there. We can go ahead and just close that up. And as we saw, you know, we kind of added in Retrofit and Moshi. We're going to go ahead and start to get down the networking route here because we're not currently doing that. So uh, one really powerful way we can use Hilt is to actually, you know, combine it with our networking layer. So I'm going to go over, ahead over here and just uh, create a new package. We're going to call it DI, uh, stands for dependency injection, pretty common way of referring to it. And then inside of here, uh, let's see, let's just make a couple different things as we see fit. So we're just going to make uh, modules. I'm not a big fan of this here, this di.modules here. So we're just going to go ahead and click on the little gear icon there. And we're going to say compact middle packages. We're going to uncheck that. And now we can see here that, you know, you can kind of get the full tree structure there um, because sometimes it makes it difficult to put the file exactly where you want. But anyway, we are going to add in a module here. We're just simply going to name it our networking networking module. And the idea here is we're going to have all of our networking based dependencies in here and specifically our retrofit instance. So we're going to annotate this class with at module and then we can also annotate it with at install in. And in this case, we're going to care to use the singleton component class, which basically means, uh, you know, declares it as a, a singleton. So if you're not if you're not familiar, it will just, you know, all of the functions inside of this uh, or sorry, this module, they'll only exist one uh, of them for the entire application, uh, especially for the networking layer. There's really only 
you know, th there's no reason to have multiple different modules here. So we can just have one here for our uh, safety. So flipping over to our documentation here for retrofit, we need to create an interface here uh, so that we can define basically the paths that we want to, uh, you know, the endpoints that we want to hit. And then we can also define, you know, an actual function that we're going to invoke on that interface. Uh, as part of our, you know, call site for our code here. Then we can go ahead and actually build a retrofit instance. And this is you know, part of the reason we're going to want it as a singleton. We're only going to want one of these instances here. We can go ahead and configure the base URL for all of our endpoints and such. And then with our retrofit instance, you can then create the service that we've kind of uh, defined here as an interface. You can kind of create that so you can then use it within your app, within your networking you know, layers, let's say, right? So your repositories, your workers, your view models, wherever you want to uh, invoke that kind of stuff. So let's jump right into it here. So bouncing back to Android Studio, let's go ahead and create another package. Sorry for being package heavy here. Let's call this our network package. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and create our, um, you know, quote service, let's call it. This will be an interface here. Now we need to, again, flip over to some documentation. So I believe we have it here. We can see that all of our endpoints here start with zenquotes.io uh, slash API. And then we have, you know, today for our daily quote, we have just quotes or, or keyword and then passing in something else for if we're trying to search for something, authors, random, all that kind of stuff. So our base URL here is going to be all the way up to there. So we will copy that information. Let's just paste it here so we have it. Our base URL will be that. Now we wanna be able to fetch the quote of the day. So we'll go ahead and create a suspend function because we're gonna be using Colin coroutines. Let's just call it get quote of the day as the name of the function here. It's not gonna take any parameters and it's going to uh, return a quote for us, we're gonna go ahead and build this out a little bit more. So the actual type here, we can go ahead and define as well. And our path here is just going to be today, which is really nice. So note that if our base URL is this, inside of our get annotation, we don't need to have this information in there all the way up to this slash. So we actually literally just need that because then eventually retrofit will kind of smush this information with the base URL to end up with like something like that for the overall uh, endpoint that we're hitting, right? And then uh, instead of just a simple quote here, we're going to go ahead and actually, what is it? I think it's called response here. All right, cool. And that's all that we need here for our quote of the day. So let's go ahead and cut this out. We will move on to our, or move back to our networking module here. And let's go ahead and annotate this function here with app provides. And then we need to, uh, let's see, let's call it provides uh, retrofit. This is going to take in nothing and it's going to return to us a retrofit instance. We can then simply just do the retrofit.builder um, base URL, kind of going through all the boilerplate here. And then we will say dot build. All right, and as I said before, we are going to use Moshi here. So we're going to add in a converter factory to help us. Again, this is all just boilerplate code here. We're going to use the Moshi converter factory dot create uh, so that we can actually just use the Moshi library to deserialize the JSON into objects that we can use inside of our app. Uh, with that, actually, I realized that I imported the incorrect library here. So if you pull down the code, you'll have it there. Um, you know, but uh, we, we need to import the converter for Moshi, not necessarily the actual uh, just raw Moshi library. I think the converter brings that in for us. So all is good there. And now we have a way to provide our retrofit. And that's wonderful because now we can use our retrofit instance to now create an instance of this service that we can use inside of other areas of our app, all right? So now we're going to say at provides again, we will say provides, uh, what is that called? The quote service. This is going to take in our retrofit instance and we are going to return an instance of the quote service. As we can see here, immediately after we add this uh, you know, parameter into this function, we can see this little icon here. If we click it, we can actually navigate to the function, but we already see Hilt working inside of our app, inside of the IDE. 
and uh, you know we're basically providing this instance, providing this retrofit uh, information. And then when we request that information here or that object, that class, uh, it's smart enough to kind of connect the dots for us and whatnot. So we can very simply here, cool. Now we can go ahead and use this function wherever we actually want, right, to get the quote service here. So for simplicity of this video, we're just going to inject it straight into the view model. Obviously, we're going to want you to subscribe to stay up to date. And in future videos, we're going to build this out a little bit more here. But the best part about Hilt, in my opinion, is being able to just inject information into our constructor of our view model. After one very simple annotation here, we call it at Hilt Android. No, nope, not Android app, sorry. Uh, Hilt view model, that's the one we're looking for. Once we have that gold text right there, we can simply just start putting stuff in the constructor and it works. Uh, quite crazy to me, to be completely honest, but hey, it's awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, add in a private val, what are we looking for here? The quote service there. And if we notice, we don't have an icon over here in the corner, um, you know, telling us that Hilt is at work here and actually injecting this quote service in. And if we, you know, kind of, you know, control click on it or, or whatever the case is to navigate to it, it navigates us directly to the interface here as opposed to, uh, you know, this function, which is what we actually want, right? We actually want, uh, you know, the quote service to be coming from this retrofit instance that we've kind of created. And so Hilt is really amazing for many things, but one thing it can't do uh, is actually, you know, exactly what we're trying to tell it to do right now without wrapping this service inside of something else, right? And this is where that concept, uh, well, not only the service, any interface, actually, we need to wrap it in some kind of implementation, uh, you know, for that interface, and then you can inject that implementation anywhere. Uh, a very common thing though for this service is that we actually can just go ahead and use this service inside of a repository, right? That follows kind of the uh, Android architecture guidelines and all that stuff. So inside our network package here, we're going to create the quote uh, repository. That will be just a simple class here that we can then leverage Hilt by saying at inject constructor. And we can then add in here the private val quote service and when we do it like that immediately we get this icon here on the left we click it we now are going straight into this function which is you know retrofit providing us uh, you know the creation of that service here not just the actual raw interface itself and that's exactly what we want that's exactly what we want to avoid so if we take a quick peek back at our view model, right? This is not really what we care for, the quote service. Instead, we care for the quote service implementation, which in our case, in Android's case, is really going to be the quote repository, right? Because the quote service is going to fetch us uh, all these different quotes and work with the different API that we have there to kind of fetch, you know, lists of quotes, a single quote, et cetera. And then the quote repository is something that we can actually, you know, leverage to kind of connect the dots a little bit. So if it's unclear here, what I mean by connect the dots is, you know, we can say here, suspend, suspend, oh my God, suspend function, get quote of the day. Won't really take in any parameters at the moment. We are then going to have this be the response of our quote uh, object. And then we can simply just say, return our quote service dot get quote of the day. I'm not entirely sure why I capitalized this one. It's still a function, so we can just simply uh, remove that. And we just gotta go back to our repository here and lowercase that, and we're all good. Perfect. Now our repository is really what we can end up using inside of all these different uh, you know, modules, screens, wherever we want them uh, to be used. Sorry, I can't talk and navigate at the same time. So now our view model here, we're going to be able to inject the quote, repository. Now I'm wondering, why is this not finding it? Ah, uh, that's exactly why. Of course, we should have one constructor with the at inject. Yep, sorry. So there's a little bit extra work here we need to do. Instead of just at hilt view model, then we need to say at inject constructor. Lovely, just a tiny bit more work there. Now we have this icon in the left, and that is why it wasn't present before. All of our dots are connected. Let's go ahead and rerun it here just to make sure the project builds. All right, everybody, I hate to go back to the Gradle file here for more configuration, but, you know, it is a live uh, production effort at the moment, so I do apologize. 
uh, we just needed to copy a different import here. So actually we needed the plugin that was previously in, uh, you know, right here. We needed to just paste that in our project level, uh, you know, build.gradle. And then we just needed to add in this ID here, um, you know, or plugin, sorry, into that uh, app level build.gradle and all is good. I went ahead and ran it again. And of course, um, Hilt activity must be attached to at Hildred, Hilt Android app application. Did you forget to specify the application class in the manifest? And oh yes, we did. I apologize for that. Inside of our Android manifest, if you remember this old guy, uh, we need to go ahead and add in the name attribute and select our one quote application, the name of that class here that we had previously extended the application. We'll go ahead and rerun things here and I suspect there should be no errors. And look at that, that is all good and well. Apologies for some of the live tutorial difficulties. All right, but outside of that, we are all good. We have our repository injected into a view model. Inside of that repository, we have our service to actually interact with the networking layer, the API. We have a function to do that. We're ready to go with suspending coroutines and all that good stuff here. Um, so we've really come a long way. I hope you, uh, hope you made it this far in the video. If you have, please smash that like button, subscribe if you're brand new so we don't miss out on what's to come. And I think we're just gonna kind of button this episode up here uh, by simply just calling, you know, setting a little function here. So let's just say fetch data, oh, data. We're going to set this equal to our view model scope dot launch because I think that syntax looks a lot nicer than having it inside of the function. And quite simply here, we're just going to say uh, if val response is going to be our quote repository dot get quote of the day. Let's go with a uh, quote of the day response, of course. And then here, let's, let's just simply log this out here. Let's go with log.e so it's nice and uh, you know obvious for us to see. And let's see, quote of the day response dot, and then we'll also just put in here the quote of the day response dot, let's go with body um, to see what actually is there. And let's just go ahead and, oh, of course, we need to call this function. What am I doing? Uh, so we will call the function inside of our one quote app, the main composable here. So we can simply just say uh, view model dot fetch data. And uh, now we can see what comes back. Uh, I know exactly what the error is. Don't say it. If you know it before I, I say it, go ahead and comment down below what you think the error is. But I can't believe this is still an issue here. We need to add in the uses permission internet because of course we are now making a network call. I saw it the second the screen went black immediately. Uh, and okay, we, we get a little bit further. Expected begin object was begin array at path dollar sign. You know, sometimes these uh, JSON data exception errors are a little bit difficult. I've been around the block, so I know exactly what this is. Let me break it down for you. Expect begin object, but was begin array. And so if we take a look at the way we've declared this function, where is it? Uh -huh. The return type here is a response of our app state dot quote, right? And this is actually a, um, uh, you know, a, a single data class, a single object. So when we take a look at how we've told Retrofit and Moshi to parse the response, we, we're saying, oh no, it's just it's just one quote, that's it, right? That, that's all you would expect, right? It's just one object that we're getting back, but our error is saying, oh, where'd it go, run. Our error is saying, but was begin array, which actually means that this here is not a response of a single object, instead it is a response of a list of objects I'm not a super big fan of that because that means, um, you know, just looking at this, there could be any number of quotes, but it is the quote of the day. There should only be one, right? Like, why do we have multiple? So this episode's getting a little bit larger than I would have expected here. Uh, but for simplicity, we're going to simply just remove um, the response idea and we're going to go ahead and return a nullable quote. And the reason for that is we now have a list of these here. So we want to then say uh, a body. And then at this point, we will say dot first, where is it? Yep. First, 
the body here will be null when it has failed to actually fetch. So we're just gonna bubble up in that case null. Uh, and in the positive case, we're just gonna get the first element out of the uh, list here. Uh, that should do it. And no, oh, no, actually where we're using it is going to now be messed up. So we need to go down the chain here and we're simply just going to return. Yep, it's not pretty, but we're just gonna go ahead and print out the actual uh, class itself. This is actually probably going to fail as well. Yeah, so it, we do have uh, display text here, null author null is favorite false. And that is because that does not match our network response. And what I mean by that here is this is what our network response actually looks like, right? The key is Q, A, I, right? There, there's not actual uh, variables here. There's just these little keys that has information. We take a look at this sample JSON here that I pulled in. You know, the quote is just a Q, the author is just an A, but inside of our app state, right, we have this data class that actually, you know, makes a little bit more sense, right? The display text is actually the quote itself. The author is the author and is favorite is a bit of, you know, user interaction here that we have, you know, with that little heart icon on the UI. This is what's known as a domain object here. Uh, we need to work with a network object. So, uh, like I said, this is getting a little bit bigger than I wanted, but if you stick with me here, we will get through it. Uh, we will go ahead and add in to the network package, a models package, and right here, we're just going to say, uh, I like prefacing it with the word network, so it's very obvious that it's coming from the network. Um, and now here we're going to have a, which is a string and val q, which is a string. Uh, and so this is going to be our author and our quote itself. We need to use this data class instead of any of our domain ones, because that doesn't match up to what the API is returning. So we're simply just going to update that. This will force us to introduce a little bit of a networking, or sorry, a little bit of a mapping layer here in between because we want to go from network quote to, uh, you know, our domain quote because it doesn't make much sense seeing Q and A as uh, variable names and such. All right, and rerunning here the application, we can see at the bottom network quote A is Carlos Ruiz Zafon and human beings believe just as they breathe in order to survive. So we are successfully hitting an API call or hitting an endpoint, deserializing the response, printing it out. We're doing it all inside of uh, a very, you know, Hilt friendly application. Obviously got a lot to clean up and I do apologize for kind of bouncing back and forth here. Uh, I think I was just moving a little faster than I should have at times. But if you made it this far, really appreciate a like, really appreciate a sub uh, so that you don't miss out on anything to come. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks so much.